Exploded Halloween special. Parcel Mouth Louis Walsh tells us what a Halloween special means to him. The theme is perfect for my two acts. Charming, but it's also a wash with both controversy and, if you're a journalist on Radio 4, controversy. Is Kelly Rowland really ill? Will she be back to put it down or does she need to be put down by a vet? Is the judges bickering getting to her? There's not a lot of love going on at the moment in the dressing rooms. Well, with images of Louis Walsh and Johnny and Kitty in my mind, I'm sort of pleased to hear it. On with the show then, and after Dermot O'Leary tries to dance and looks the stiffest he's ever been, or at least since he saw what he was going to be paid for the series, we meet our locum judge, Alexandra Burke. But Kelly Rowlands is not the only absence this week. With a brand new member, it is The Risk. I know we're having to act all shocked and sad, but do you understand, you could have had four new members and we still wouldn't even have noticed. Off whatever his name was goes to pursue a successful career in mobile phone insurance or whatever it is, so rare to see them voluntarily climbing into the skip, saying, just wish them the best of luck. <laughs> Fine, but they don't need it. They'll get a nice house deposit off the live tour in January while you ask people if they feel 9 99 a month would be a fair price to pay for peace of mind when you're out and about with a mobile phone. No? Okay, well, I wish you and your mobile phone the best of luck. Poor boy, good luck to you. Anyway, they hire Ashford off another one of the old groups who will doubtless become a worldwide star and be renamed Ashford International. And the groups are now made of so many reconstituted parts of other groups that they are, appropriately enough for Halloween, resembling one of Frankenstein's creations. I still feel sorry for the dancers. They're brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and trying desperately to sex up some really pretty rotten karaoke. Keep going, you troopers. The judges say appropriately well done you things to the risk, and up next, here's Johnny. That's from The Shining. And shining he is. Watch his confidence grow as he does a beautiful job of that old devil called love. So beautiful, in fact, that Gary goes and allows him to plant one on him right on the kisser. Sophie Habibis comes on and bang, bang. I shot him down, bang, bang. But she's the one shot down by the judges. It's like, it's like you're a secretary that sings at the weekends or something. Sophie's having none of that. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Alexandra Burke opts for the tried and trusted management technique of softening any blow with the deployment of an affectionate matey moniker. Okay, mate, all right, fella? Okay there, chap? There was some slight tuning problems, babe. Yes, babe. And next time, babe, I want my clothes laid out in the order I'm going to put them on. And all right, babe? And then when I get back, I want my fucking sushi laid out at room temperature, all right? I do not want cold fucking sushi, all right, babe? Babe, I don't want my sushi cold. I want it at room temperature, babe! Is that alright, babe? Thank you, babe! Okay? Okay? Sorry, babe. <clears throat> Where was I? Uh, Marcus Collins comes on with a song of the night, a little mashup of In Excess and Stevie Wonder, and he does a really smashing job of it, and I'm relieved that the lovely young man has secured his future in the touring company of We Will Rock You. He was brilliant, and Dermot pauses to admire his curiously handled cane. What do you reckon of that? It's alright, isn't it? <laughs> Replies Dermot, and I don't see it myself. Just looks like a big silver penis to me. Misha B comes on and sings with special guests Biff Tannen, Nelson out of The Simpsons, Phil Mitchell, Dirty Den, Pepper out of Annie the Musical, Dennis the Menace, Gordon Brown, Minnie the Minx and Gripper Stepson. You know what your reputation is, babe? It's tainted, love. Maybe if she'd stuck a flake in her hair she'd be more endearing. Nevertheless, Louis surmises that if Kelly Rowland hadn't been in LA sucking on lockets, she would have said, you put it down, baby girl. Yes, but she wouldn't have looked as ridiculous as you do. Janet Devlin sings Every Breath You Take and it's a brutally hard arrangement where she's singing diatonic seconds in a minor key and I think everybody panics a bit and she was actually singing better than I think some people might have thought. Frankie Kokoza comes on stage eventually. This is his second long entrance and I'm realising that Gary Barlow is sneakily trying to minimise his singing time on stage. Next week there'll be a tracking shot starting in the toilet in his house while the band frantically vamps and he washes his hands, comes down the stairs, his mum spits on a hanky and wipes his face, all the way to him signing in at his reception at the studios and onto the stage. Truly, he is a David Essex for the 21st century and for that reason alone he must die. Kitty Brucknell comes on with a beautifully intimate, scaled back performance. Just her and a wooden chair Oh no wait, she's strapped to a socking great Catherine wheel and now she's even channeling Tina Turner with her patented I've just crapped my pants walk. The judges have their mandatory ding dong with Alexandra Burke amply filling Kelly Rowland's role. That is not cabaret! Did I say it was cabaret? Did I say it comes across as cabaret? 
You better get the words correct. Okay, dot com. Thank you. Okay, dot com. Fair enough. Dot org. Dot uk. Uh, and what the blazes are you talking about? Dot tv. Dot biz. Time now to meet the hastily rebranded Rhythmix, due to not doing a basic Google search at the beginning of the series and discovering they had the same name as a charity. But what shall the name be? Something mixed. The last word could be mix. I don't know. Magic. Concrete. Cake? Cake mix? Cake mix! Everyone likes cake mix, I bet you do, darling. It is Little Mix! And on they come. Little Mix stupid, Little Mix... No, I don't mean that. They're only little. Come on, let's be nice. Uh, they do a good job of covering Lady Gaga in cake mix. Craig Coulton sings in a jacket from Coldplay's Big and Tall range. Uh, he might not set fire to the rain, uh, but he might well get a strongly worded letter from the Blue Man group, who don't generally take too kindly to people knocking off their shtick. But will he stay or be bunged in the skip? Here's what happened. Next week, my predictions are that Janet Devlin will sing a song that features the word day, which she will pronounce zay. Marcus will start playing the trumpet like Roy Castle, and Kitty will continue to really bring something special to the X Factor by crapping a live eel into a bucket. Looking forward to it tremendously. Have a good week!